Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great Wednesday. Uh, it's late, it's 9.45 right now. A uh, couple things we're going to take a look at. Obviously, we're only eight days away or so from the heavy event, which is great news there. We do have, obviously, the CPI day that came out today that obviously crushed the markets a little bit for us with Bitcoin miners and Bitcoin. Bitcoin was able to rebound afterwards. It's kind of like it shrugged it off, so that's great news there. We do have an update from BitFarms as well on, well, it's not really a big update, but we do have something from them as far as what's going on with Paraguay. They're at least being proactive there, which is good news. Uh, but that is it. And then we're going to take a look at, the, obviously, the miners, how they did Bitcoin today. Uh, we'll also take a look at how the miners stacked up for Q4 numbers, right, and as far as operations are concerned, and then their financials as well. And we'll grade them on 13 metrics, uh, weighted and non-weighted. Uh, so we'll take a look at all that. We'll get through that. And then we'll get into you guys' uh, Q&A here. Uh, but as always, you guys know the drill here. This is not financial advice for entertainment only. Please do your own research. I'm investing in following coins and companies for full disclosure. And then corrections will be posted to Discord, YouTube, and Twitter. And I thought it was maybe appropriate to put in here that I'm not paid by any public Bitcoin mining companies. There's been obviously some uh, questioning of people talking about the Bitcoin miners. Are they getting paid by them or are they not? So I thought I would just put it out there. That way it is plain as day that I do not get paid by the public Bitcoin mining companies. I only get paid by you guys, the Patreon members, uh, Bitcoin, mem or Bitcoin members. Uh, uh, YouTube members and from the viewers, obviously, from that. Okay, so that's where my allegiance lies. It lies with you guys. Uh, okay, let's take a look at what's going on here with Bitcoin and the Bitcoin miners here on the chart here. We can see that Bitcoin obviously fell today, right? I mean, it was down quite a bit. Uh, it went all the way down to a low of 67,463, and then it would bounce back and close at 70,636. So a nice swing there, about $3,000 and change roughly. Uh, it came down pretty close to this line here that I've drawn kind of like our su lower support line potentially based on the bottoms that we were seeing here. I headed up a little bit higher here last uh, week or two ago, but then as we fell below it, I updated it and now it seems like it's kind of keeping track with that. So we'll see if it continues going forward this way as well. Uh, Bitcoin's up a little bit here now on the after hours or in the new day, I guess you'd say. It is right now at 71,060, which is nice to see. Obviously, what we want to see is have Bitcoin go above uh, the previous all-time high, which was 73,835 and change. Uh, before the having event, if that happens, that would be great. Like I said, the having is right now scheduled for maybe the 19th, I think. We have to move that line over to the 19th here. Uh, don't know exactly what time it's going to happen. Uh, if it happens during the time when I can do it, I'll maybe do a live stream on that when it happens. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, miners, on the other hand, were... Uh, Today wasn't a good day for the miners as well. We've had multiple multiple days on in the red with the miners. I mean, you can see here with Argo, or sorry, with Annie. And I probably should take out some of these guys here that I'm no longer covering. I will be paying attention to them, but I will not be covering them. But we do have, obviously, all of these down. Cypher was the only one that was up to date, 0.24% on the, on the day, which was, out of everything else, pretty good for them. Uh, but the miners were kind of all over the place here. We'll see what, how they do tomorrow, if Bitcoin continues to go up. Uh, but we are, like I said, getting close to the having event. I think that's going to have an impact, obviously, still on the miners potentially trading downwards a little bit more uh, unless Bitcoin starts to really rip here, okay? Uh, but that is it. Obviously, the CPI data didn't help today, like we talked about here. So if we go over here, uh, there it is. A CPI report, inflation comes in hot, dashes hopes for Fed rate cuts, and I think that's kind of what kind of spooked the market, uh, more or less, with Bitcoin and Bitcoin miners, but Bitcoin kind of shrugged it off later on in the day. Right, and you can see that the CPI, the headline inflation came in at today at uh, 3.5, and the core inflation came in at 3.8, so it was a little bit like 0.1 higher than what uh, analysts were expecting. All right, so that kind of spooked the market here, and obviously fears of potential rate cuts being withheld for longer and things like that are obviously now in the uh, back of investors' minds. Okay, so that is it for that one. Uh, as long as it doesn't get too hot here going in the wrong direction where we continue going up, I think we'll be okay. This might be just a little blip in, on the radar, and then we might continue going down. We'll have to see, right? Because if it continues going up, we might actually get higher interest rates, which obviously would not be good. Okay. Now, the only thing that I was able to find on the Paraguay uh, Bitcoin mining ban, any updates on that, there was some posts, but they were in Spanish. Couldn't really figure out what the heck's going on there. So... We do have an update from BitFarms, which is nice. Uh, and they state here that the founders of BitFarms met with Paraguay's Minister of Industry and Commerce on our ever-growing expansion in the country. Meanwhile, the Paraguay Senate issued a statement in support of legal crypto current, uh, lipto current, crypt, ah, lipto crypto mining activities. Um, so that's a good sign there, right? Uh, we talked about the possible 
uh, amendment being proposed right by in Paraguay that would ban Bitcoin mining for 180 days, roughly like that, on any, I believe it was on any new mining operations, where I believe that with Bitcoin being already in there, having approval and everything else, that, that would not affect them. I still believe that's the case. Uh, but it's at least nice to see that uh, Bitfarmers is out there, uh, you know, shaking the flesh uh, with the legislators there and obviously making a case for why they should be still able to operate without any issues and why it's a benefit, to, obviously, to the country as well. So that is all good news there, okay? Now, saying having said that, we'll see how this progresses, but I still think that this is not a big deal in Paraguay with uh, Bitfarms. Like I said, they have already approvals in place. I think they should be fine getting to 21 exahash by the end of this year, as long as they can build out quickly enough. Okay. Now, we do this about every three months or so, where we look at the quarterly results for the miners. We look at a bunch of metrics, about 13 metrics in total. We look at operational side of things, and we also look at the financial side of things, right? How are their balance sheet and um, debt, to, uh, debt, debt is doing, all that stuff. On the ratios is that improving is not improving and we go through here and then we kind of score the miners as far as uh, those metrics are concerned then we look at to see who which ones are were the best ones basically performing for that quarter based on 13 metrics okay so the first one is quarter over quarter hash rate growth so these are all for operational i believe these are like seven metrics that i have here and then we got six financial metrics as well okay so quarter over quarter hash rate growth we saw obviously marathon have the biggest gains here 5.5 x hash growth followed by hut eight Hut 8 obviously went through a merger where they got USBTC uh, hash rate as well added to it. That's the main reason why Hut 8 is in here with 4.5, roughly 4.6 exahash of growth. Then you got Core Scientific with 1.9, Riot with 1.7 exahash, and then BitDeer with 1. Uh, I guess you could say 1.7 roughly on that, and then everybody else below that. So those were the top five there for that. Uh, quarter to year to date hash rate. So this is basically for the full year for them to see how they did uh, from the beginning of the year of from basically the end of December of 2022 to the end of December in 2023 okay marathon number one here 17.6 exa has been increased right that is a huge increase in hash rate but that was also delayed by a year uh, they should have been there or at least that's what that's what their stated goal was to get to 23 exa hash by the end of 2022 I believe Right. But they obviously installed a heck of a lot in 2023. BitDeer, 5.3 exahash. Hut 8, 4.6, again, with the merger with USBTC. Cypher, 4.36. Iris at 4.2. And those are the top five there. And you can see how everybody else stacked up uh, down here. Now, going down to the year-over-year -year hash rate added. So we're looking basically um, from March, which obviously just ended here. So we're looking at March all the way through March of last year. You can see Marathon came in again, number one here, 13.2 exahash, followed by CleanSpark now, 9.7 exahash, Iris with 6 exahash, BitDeer with 5.3, TerraWolf at 4.6, and those are the top five here on that. You can see how everybody else stacks up down here. Quarter Bitcoins per exahash efficiency. So we're looking at how many Bitcoins did they mine, what was their average hash rate for that quarter, and we're getting a BTC per exahash efficiency on them. Cypher came in number one. Cypher came in at 12 point, or sorry, 212. BTC per exahash efficiency, then we got Hive at 204, CleanSpark at 200, Iris at 200, also pretty close to CleanSpark there, and then TerraWolf at uh, 194. So those are the top five, and then, I mean, you saw a lot of them being pretty close to each other here. And then finally it goes down to where Hut 8, 167, and then Riot 133 roughly. Okay, so those are the numbers there. Quarter BTC mined, uh, so we're looking at just how much they did mine over the quarter. Uh, Marathon came number one with 4,135. Core Scientific with 3,041, and this is only for soft mining, right? Core also gets BTC from uh, hosting, things like that. So does Marathon. Marathon gets it from JVs and things like that. Okay, CleanSpark came in at number three with 2,019, Riot with 1,629, Cypher with 1,326, and those are the top five right there uh, for production numbers for BTC mine. And then we're looking at quarterly uh, BTC per million shares. Um, so how many basically how many bitcoins were mined in the quarter per million shares so if you look at it that way you got core coming in at number one with 17 btc per million shares marathon with 15.4 follow at bitdeer 11.6 iris at 10.9 hut 8 with 10.7 and that's basically the top five there hut 8 again was mainly because of uh, usbtc merger okay and then the rest followed down below here 
Uh, growth left uh, peta hash here, so we're looking to see how much growth do they have left from where they are right now. And we got clean spark with 36.2x hash. This is for things that they've already purchased. Uh, and then ride it at 28. So number two, bit farms at 14. Iris with 11. Cypher at 10. That's kind of the growth plan here for the next year. I guess you could say, well, for clean spark, it might be in ride, might be into 2025 as well. So those guys have the most here. Okay, now getting into the quarterly financials. A couple of things we look at here, um, six metrics. One of them is obviously compensation to revenue. What is that percentage of the compensation that's uh, on, the, on the balance sheet or on the financial results compared to the revenue here? And obviously the lower, the better on a percentage wise. So we have CleanSpark coming in at number one with 12.36, Hive with 13.86, BitDeer with 14, almost 15%, Course Scientific at 17% and Iris at 24%. So those are the top five here. The worst one was BitDigital with 76.29. And for a lot of these guys, it was the end of the year quarter for them, right? So they added a bunch of potentially share-based compensation into that. They added uh, potentially also bonuses and things like that. So those are always going to be a little high here on that side of things. I think CleanSpark and Hives, CleanSpark was in Q1, so it wasn't there end of the year. Hive was in Q3, I believe. And then BitDeer, I believe, was there end of Q, uh, Q4 uh, numbers there. Okay, Price to book ratio. Uh, what we want to do is be under one are typically considered solid investments by value investors, right? So we want to be as close to one or under one. Of course, scientific came in a negative number, so I'm giving them the last uh, uh, lowest score, 12, on it, but they're coming up here as number one. So actually, it's Riot with number one. Then you got Hive, number two spot, Bit Digital, number three, Hut, eight, number four, and Iris, number five spot with the figures here. And then the worst one here was obviously Clean Spark in the quarter here, and I think that was basically because of their growth. Um, I think that's maybe what kind of contributed to it. Uh, and this is based on the current market cap. So I don't have the market cap for at the end of the Q4 numbers for them, okay? So that's kind of how the things stack up based on that. And then current ratio here, obviously things are gonna be a little interesting here. So Marathon. So this is looking at how many times can they pay their current debt with their current uh, assets, right? Marathon, number one here, with 30 times being able to pay their current uh, debt. Rye with eight times, BitDeer at 5.6 times, Cypher at 4.6, and then CleanSpark at 4.2. Those are the top five there. And then you got uh, quarter, over quarter over quarter current ratio. So we're looking to see if it has any improvements in it, right? So the ones that have improved the most get a better score. Marathon here improved uh, by 19. So the number one, followed by Cypher at 3.2, CleanSpark at 2.9, Rye at 1.1, and then Hive 0.9 three here. So those are the ones in the top five here. Debt to equity ratio, when we look at that, obviously lower is better. Of course, scientific got a negative number, so I give them a 12 again. On the scoring side of things, then we got Riot came in number one with a, uh, 0.064, Iris with 0.092, CleanSpark with 0.125, Cypher 1.52, and Marathon at 2.32. So those are the top five there. You can see everybody else down below. Quarter over quarter debt to equity ratio. So the same thing. Did we get any improvements here? So any decreases in that will be obviously better. And we got Terra Wolf uh, decreasing that by 0.326. So that was good, obviously. Marathon going down 1.25, followed by Hive going down 0.099. Cypher down 0.063. And then BitDeer down 0.028. So those are the top five here for that. Okay. So now when we score it all together here for the total of seven metrics on growth, so basically operations, we have Marathon coming in number one with 21 points, CleanSpark with 28 points, BitDeer with 37 points, Iris with 38, along with Core. So those guys are tied for the fourth spot, and you got Cypher number five spot with 44 on it. Okay. Now when we look at this uh, six score metrics, financials, we can see here that at this point we got Riot actually came in number one here, 24, followed by Hive with 25, Marathon along with 25, so the number two spots here. Queenspark number three spot with 29 points, Cypher and with 32 points, number four spot, and Bitdeer number five spot here with 37 points. Okay, now combining all those metrics together, here's the score that we get here. Marathon comes in at number one with 46, Queenspark with number uh, two spot 57, Riot in number three spot with 70, followed by Bitdeer at 74, Cypher number five spot with 76 here. Okay, now. Uh, as you guys know, I like to weigh some of these metrics here. That I think some things are more important than others. And I've been doing this for the last couple of quarters, so all of these weighings, uh, weights should be the same for all those. 
So I, I do not change those. That's kind of what I look at. And I give uh, quarter over quarter hash rate growth less of a weighing, right? 0.5. Same thing with year-to-date hash rate growth, year-over-year hash rate growth. I look more at the BTC per X hash efficiency, right? So I give that a two weighing growth left. I give that more weight as well. I think that's important. And then uh, BTC mined, I give that a half a rate, a half a point uh, weighing on that. And then BTC per million shares, I give that um, just a one. So it's basically what it was on the top. Based on that, we can see here that Clean Spark community number one of 23, followed by Iris of 33. And then you got Marathon at 34, followed by Cypher at 35, and Core Scientific at 40.5. So those are the top five here on that weight metrics. And then the total of six scores financial weighted, I give current ratio a two, right? So I put more weight on that. Debt to equity ratio as well, to price to book ratio two. And then compensation revenue per revenue. A two, uh, quarter over quarter, debt to equity, one, and a current quarter, quarter over quarter, current ratio of one as well, right? So I weigh those things more, more heavily so than the quarter over quarter uh, uh, gains, I guess you could say, okay? Based on that, Riot came in number one again. So Riot's doing really well on the financial side of things. 37 here, number one. Hive came in number 42 score. Marathon number three with 47 score. Clean Spike number four spot with 49. And then Cypher with 58, number five spot here. On those, you can see how everybody else has performed here on those metrics. Now, combining all, everything here, here's what we get. So here are the weighted metrics. Clean Spark came in at number one, followed by Marathon at 81, their number two spot. Then Riot, number three spot. Iris, number four spot. Hive, number five spot here. And then uh, everybody else down below here. Okay. And then here are the non-weighted metrics. So really, we have basically Marathon and Clean Spark are like neck and neck, I guess you could say, on these things. Riot, same spot here, number three spot. Bit Deer. Uh, on the weighted metrics, actually does worse here. Came in number seven spot, came in number four spot. spot. Cypher, number five, uh, a little bit worse than the weighted metrics to number six spot. Iris actually did better with the weighted metrics here at four spot. Hive did better with the weighted metrics as well, number five spot here. So you can kind of see how everything stacks up on it, right? And this is, I think, kind of just a good overall, it's a little bit lagging indicator because we're lagging by about three and a half months or so on this because it takes that long for the miners to provide the information for us on the quarterly results and then i got to run all these uh, metrics on them and do the updates on it but at least it gives you an idea how they did in q4 compared to every other miner here that we have 12 miners now right, we got rid of six miners that were the smaller ones yesterday so that is all based on the larger miners going to be about 5x a hash or higher at the end of the year and they still have pretty good growth so these are like the top miners, I think, right now in the space here going forward, right? That doesn't mean some of the smaller miners that are out there that they couldn't get to this level because we've seen it with other miners. We've seen CleanSpark come out of nowhere with 100 petahash hash in 2021 in January and now be in the top three miners, right? So it is definitely possible. Uh, it just all depends on execution and uh, growth and all those things. So it is possible to get the smaller miners in there. But that is it. Um, you know, this definitely helps a little bit looking in the miners and things like that as part of all the metrics that we look at here. So it's kind of like um, <laughs> you get a, the picture gets a little bit better or clearer the more metrics you do, more things you run, things like that. And that kind of shows you potentially the path to which ones to go with, right? Uh, it's not always going to be exactly 100% on the money, but it does show at least where the strengths are and the weaknesses are, some of the miners and things like that. All right, so that's it. We'll get into the Q&A here session as always. But as always, you guys know the drill here. Uh, Patreon members get access to the spreadsheets. Link to Patreon membership is down in the description below. That is $8 a month. If you pay for a full year, you get 10% discount. And then uh, there might be a couple spots open in the $5 tier range and the $4 tier range as well. Okay, but that is it. That's my sales pitch to you guys. That's all I sell. Uh, so let's get into the Q&A here side of things and we'll call it a day so let's see here i want to go here okay q a side let me go back over here and we'll see if you guys have any questions we'll give it a couple seconds as uh, this is delayed a little bit by about 15 20 seconds or so give or take uh, so let's see let's see if you guys have any questions all right okay see them coming in here uh, let's see First question, do you think Q1 for Iris will turn profitable? Uh, good question. We would have to take a look at Iris, see how they're looking and how far away they were from their prior numbers. So for Q1, let's take a look at the screen here. 
Q1. Where is it at? Uh, there it is. Ending in March. So I think they should be at 53.9 million in revenue, roughly, right? If we take a little bit. Uh, I've been pretty close to some of their numbers here. And based on that, if we look at their, well, this is for H1, so it's a little tough, right? But they were, let's see, what did they lose on that, that first half or the second half? They were 15 cents uh, negative, and they were only shy about 8.5 million, it looks like, net loss. That might come out to be a positive for them based on what they have generated revenue here, right? 8.5, that's probably more than what they are short here between these two quarters, December and the March quarter. So I would think they should be positive on it, right? Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Okay. Next question here. Uh, let's see. Here. What are some upcoming BitFarm catalysts? Well, I think they need to get to, they're at 6.5. I think they are, need to get to 10 exahash by probably by the end of the first half. So within the next three months or so, they need to get to at least 10 exahash, I think, in order to be able to get to the next 11 exahash growth in the next six months after that. So I think that's kind of the catalyst that we're kind of looking for there. Also, for them to come out possibly that stating that they are fully funded to the 21 exahash, I think that would definitely dispel a lot of the fear in the stock uh, right now with people being worried that they're going to dilute. So... It's kind of what I would be looking for, at least what I would hope to see. Uh, let's see. Question. Bitfarm share price is down 45% from local highs, but diluted 45% uh, based on shares. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure I answered the question there. Bitfarm share price is down 45 from local high, but diluted 45%. Um, we know they've been diluting, uh, but through the ATM to fund the growth of 21 exahash. I think it's the dilution is accretive to investors, right? Because they're growing basically 3X from where they are right now with their hash rate. Um, I've been buying it, I bought it about more yesterday, right? I bought last week, I bought, bought the week before. I think, I still think the stock is way undervalued, but that's just my opinion, right? Not financial advice. Uh, let's see. Uh, how high do you think BitFarms can go? I think it can go north of fifteen dollars. Uh, excuse me, depending where Bitcoin goes. If Bitcoin goes one hundred fifty thousand, two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand, three hundred thousand. Then we're talking about you know maybe even higher than that. But my range is kind of like between fifteen and thirty, maybe even higher, depending where Bitcoin goes, uh, and how fast it can actually build out to twenty one exahash. Uh, let's see. Uh, is there any way to tell how many shares or percentage of the ATM each company has used up? Uh, not really. It's kind of tough unless they actually report that they're done with the ATM or they amend the ATM or anything like that. That's the only way we're going to find out how much they actually pulled on it. Uh, but there's really no way to tell. Um, you know, If only there was such a thing called as a blockchain where they could put that information on as far as how many sh new shares are being added in and people could see it. But you know, I guess there's not such a thing. Uh, it would be nice to have everything on the blockchain, uh, especially like the number of shares, right? If you're diluting, the number of shares should be increasing at some place. Um, and that should be public information, I think. But maybe in time we'll have that. Uh, let's see here. If BTC crashes, what could be plan B for the miners? Um, for them, it would be just probably just to hold out as long as they can. Um, you know, it depends on where Bitcoin crashes too. If Bitcoin crashes down to... 40,000, 30,000, or something like that, uh, then you're looking at probably a lot of miners are going to be unplugging at that point because they're just going to be profitable. So that would decrease the network hash rate, which then would decrease the difficulty, which would make some of the miners that are still operating really good with uh, good electricity costs and things like that, operations, those, they might still be profitable at that point. Um, so, well, I don't think that's going to happen, but if it does, that wouldn't be good. Uh, let's see. Question, did you buy any miners today? No, I basically put in all my uh, cash that I had for the week in yesterday. So I'm done for the week, unfortunately. All right, you just never know when things are going to continue to go down. So I just kind of buy on dips, and yesterday was the day that I bought. Uh, uh, Seb, thanks for valuing our input and cutting the miners that we weren't interested in. Way to listen to your subscribers, Patreon. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I saw it for a while that the... 
from well from basically from YouTube the views weren't there for some of the smaller miners it's just like I could talk about them all I want but there's just, there wasn't any interest in them so it was kind of like all right there's a couple of people that are obviously interested in it but it's, um, is it worth my time obviously to do that uh, Hi, Swishin, what is your personal price target for Mara over the next coming months? I'm curious to know if you have one. Yeah, I think Mara could... Uh, the big thing for them is the operation side of things, right? If they can fix those operations and have a much better uptime, I think they could be north of $80, you know, with a nice bull run here, if not higher than that. Uh, but that's kind of where we are right now with the operations not being that great. That's kind of why the stock is, the stock is kind of suffering because of it. Uh, but if they fix that, yeah, I mean, they could probably be easy north of $100. Um, as long as Bitcoin goes up to like 150, 200,000 or something like that. But not financial advice. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, Bitfarm share price is down 45% from the local high, diluted 45% of shares. Spark shares are down 39% from local high, but diluted only 20%. So it seems CleanSpark a better buy based on price. Uh, well, depending, right? CleanSpark also had a much higher valuation and much better stock price, so they were able to dilute less. Uh, Bitfarms obviously was trying to dilute to grow to get to 21x to hash and things like that. And their stock price was obviously much lower. So that obviously hurt them there. Uh, but the growth is still really good for bit farms as far as where they are right now compared to the other peers so if you look at just the valuation because i think clean spark is pretty well valued at this point but bit farms still seems like it's more undervalued than clean spark and then some of the other peers as well Let's see uh clean spark dilution is not showing up um i don't know where you would find it to see if they were diluting um Right, it's kind of tough unless they actually report something on it that they are done with the ATM or something like that. Uh, we're going to be able to find it. Uh, just like we didn't know that they pulled on basically 500 million of the ATM within three months until they actually reported. It. I was like, okay, well, and then they came up with other news that they're dealing for another 800 million or so, and it's like obviously didn't do well after that. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Could you also tell the current price to book ratios of the big six miners? Uh, I thought I did that in the video with all the data. Let me see. Did I not do that? Quarterly price to book ratios. Uh, where is it at? Price to book ratios. Okay, so the top ones. So you're looking at what? Clean Spark is 4.3, Marathon is at 3. Based on the latest numbers that we have here for them, then you got who else in there? Uh, Riot is at 1.55. Core is at a negative number there. Uh, you got Bitfarms at 2.3. Bitdeer at 2.4. Cypher at... Where's Cypher at? 2.4 as well, something like that. So that's kind of the numbers that I see right now, at least. Let's uh, see do you remember during other bull runs how many green days in a row miners ran and average daily gains? No, I don't. Uh, we could probably look that up, uh, but that was basically from 2020 to 2021 run, right? But we had, I mean, it didn't take long. It took a couple months. Was it six, eight months, something like that for the miners? I'm trying to think here. When did they actually peak? They peaked right around... 2021 in around April May so that was basically a year after uh, the having event uh, let's see Sebastian let's say that they don't upgrade to 12x a hash and go through the having with 6.5x hash bit farms will they survive the with 6.5 yeah they'll survive without a problem uh, and they're not going to get to 12x a hash by in the next not couple of days that's not going to happen but uh the goal here is i think for them to get at least like maybe 10x a hash by the end of the first half so by the end of june right if they can do that i think that's gonna be great and then that still leaves them with another uh 11x a hash to grow in the next six months after that uh, let's 
see. Will Wolf ever be two dollars? Where's it at now? Uh, let me take a look at it here. Wolf is at two dollars eighteen. Uh, might we still a couple more days before the heavy event? Uh, you just never know. But it all depends on where Bitcoin goes. And sometimes the miners don't even follow Bitcoin. So it just all depends on investors, right? Uh, investors right now are just kind of sitting maybe on the sidelines a little bit here. Uh, let's see. Uh, question, which company do you think has the best operations besides CleanSpark? Depending on what you look at. If you look at efficiency, uptime, and things like that, I think Hive is one of them as well. Then you got uh, Iron, BitFarm's in there as well. Uh, Cypher's kind of close to that as well, along with TerraWolf. They do uh, curtail a little bit, but not that much. Um, who else do we have? I think that'd be kind of it. Uh, out of the minds that we do have now, Core also pretty good recently. Um... Uh, what do you think Riot's share price can go to? Uh, probably north of 60, as long as they fix their operations as well. They build that course kind of facility really well. They can definitely do pretty well there, but it just depends on them, right? Uh, on that one. But definitely north of 60, if not higher than that. Uh, but Bitcoin's got to be at least like 150 to 200,000 on that one. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Uh, Let's see, think the having could actually be a buy the news event. Seems like everyone I know is fudding about it, priced in, in my opinion. Uh, possibly last having cycle we saw the miners actually go down into the having a year prior, and then they kind of were flat or going down a little bit after the having for about a couple of weeks before they started going back up with Bitcoin going up and everything else. So I've been buying the whole time, right? As things come down, I've been dollar cost averaging in. I don't know where the bottom is going to be on this. We have a different cycle this time. Bitcoin has reached a new all-time high before the halving. That's never happened. We have the spot Bitcoin ETF. That's never been in a prior cycle as well. So everything is different this time around. And I just don't know where the bottom is. So I'm just kind of buying as best I can here. Uh, and I'm not going to time the perfect bottom. Uh, I got kind of lucky in 2022, end of 2022 in December, when the miners were all crashing down at that point. I was buying more and more at that point because they were just so doggone cheap. And I knew that eventually, I didn't know when, I knew after the having event, they were probably gonna pop on price and things like that. But at that point, you just never know where the bottom's gonna be. So I was just kind of continuing to buy in as much as I could. And it actually worked out really well. Uh, let's see. Let's see, question. Uh, what is the top five profitable companies after the having? Profitable would probably be, and we did a video, break even video for the miners after the having. It was, I think, CleanSpark was also in there. Cypher. Uh, let me take a like, look at that. Let me take a look at my numbers here on that side. Break even. Uh, based on the break even for some of these miners, you would have uh, CleanSpark, Riot. Uh, let me see here core potentially and you got cypher bitdeer and terrible with bitcoin being at seventy thousand. the network hash would be at 60 600 exa hash at that point right and that's not that's looking at all cash expenses they would be profitable at that point i think the best one might be actually clean spark based on the numbers that i have on them right now and everybody else the next one would be probably core uh but if riot can obviously improve their operations and things like that they could definitely be uh one of the top ones there as well, okay? Uh, what do you think about Invest Answers, James, Analysis on Miners? I think it's actually pretty good. Uh, he looks at, I think, some other things that I look at as well. Some things we look at <laughs> that are similar, uh, but I think he does a pretty good job on it. He's had clean spark. The only one I think we differ on is Iron. Um, he doesn't view them as favorably as I do. I'm not sure why, uh, but... That's the only one that we really differ on. Everything else that we've analyzed here, CleanSpark was his favorite, same with mine as well, based on my numbers here. And I think he also got into bid farms, I believe. I don't know if he sold it after the, obviously the FUD with uh, um, the CEO, right? And then obviously Paraguay now, but I think he's pretty good. Let's see. Do you think bid farms will drop even more looking to buy more? I don't know, right? That's why I've been kind of like, setting aside as much as I can invest in each week and I kind of do that. So if it dips, I'll buy. If it dips, I'll buy. Even if it doesn't dip, I'll probably buy. Uh, but that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, 
uh, I know as short volume ratio for Mara is about 60%, Clean Spark short volume ratio is 12%. What do you think of those ratios? Uh, when are those as of? Are those as of today? If they are, uh, Clean Spark's obviously come down quite a bit, so is Mara. So I'm a little bit surprised. I think maybe the short interest of Mara is because of their operations, right? Over the last three months, They've been operating at like 60% of their hash rate. So I think maybe that's why you're seeing more there on it, uh, potentially. Let's see, does the Paraguay uh, fly to secure you at all, in, at all in regards to Bitfarms? Do you think Bitfarms or CleanSpark is better value at the current price? Uh, I think they're both pretty great values right now. And the fight about the Paraguay doesn't really scare me right now because I believe... From my understanding is that they have all the operational approvals in the country, right? And most of the FUD is based on illegal Bitcoin mining in the country where they're plugging into facilities and infrastructure that's not designed to, you know, operate so many machines or handle like that kind of load. So I think that's what's causing the issues there. Um, so based on that, I don't have an issue right now with uh, what's going on with Paraguay. Um, and then as far as Bitcoin or Bitfarms and CleanSpark, I think Clean obviously had a nice run here and it's really well priced right now. Bitfarms, I feel, is a little bit more undervalued right now. That's kind of my feeling on it. Uh, when do you see the miner starting its bull run? A few months after the halving or how far out? Usually a couple of weeks out. So I would say between four and eight weeks. So a month or two, roughly, I would think. But that depends on Bitcoin. Right? We have the halving event tomorrow. Bitcoin goes up to 80,000. Well, the miners are going to be probably running at that point too. So we'll have to see. see is there anything that is starting to concern you i was expecting much more of a rally leading up to this having um i wasn't actually i was saying a year ago you know, be careful with the having because we may have the miners coming down in price before the having and i was expecting the miners to actually go down in price for the full year slowly right but go down slowly we actually had the opposite we had the miners pump through the first half of the year last year kind of stall out a little bit in the summertime then start back pumping up so and I think that was basically on the hype on the spot Bitcoin ETS being possibly approved. Um, and that's why I said it's a different cycle this time around. So, but right now in the last basically, was it, three months from January, miners have been pretty much coming down here. We've had a little ups and things like that, but they've been retracing those ups and we're kind of trending downwards on them. So um, there's only been, I think, one or two. CleanSpark, I think, and Cypher are the only ones that are still positive from the beginning of the year, right? But not by much. So... That's kind of what I expected things to happen. Uh, let's see here. Hey, good evening, Sebastian. I bought more bit farms for 190. Day. Nice job. Do you think it will go lower before the having? It might. All right. There's no, there's nothing set in stone that it can't go any lower. Um, it just all depends on the sentiment of investors right now. And the sentiment of investors is they're fearful of the having event. So prices are going down on all the miners. Let's see. Question. Uh, CleanSpark doesn't sell the BTC they mined. Uh, by the way, Aaron sold their all BTC that they mined, but even their EPS is, lo is lost. How do you think that? Earnings per share. Uh, okay, so CleanSpark was able to take advantage of the FASB rules because they do have HODL, right? So that helped them out. And then you also have... Um, Iron reporting for six months of information at that point. So you're looking from June, right? Was it from June? From July through December. And they sell, but they've also been growing a lot. So I think that's part of it there. And then you also tack on other things, compensation, bonuses, things like that. That's where you get the loss on those types of things. So I think for Q1, Iron should have a positive EPS. Uh, let's see. Did you see the Iron Big Buy after close? Do you think it was Mike? Uh, you're talking about Mike Alfred? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I didn't see that big move up there on Iron. It might be. I, I mean, he's uh, obviously. No, actually, I don't think it is Mike because Mike, I don't think, can buy the shares of Iron. He's. Uh, uh, what is he there? He's on the board there, I believe, as an advisor, I think, or something like that. So he's limited to what he can and can't buy on that on that stock because he has insider information. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Quality miners are making bucks leading into the halving, so why would you hodl 
you need to ramp into the having. Uh, well, the reason to huddle into the having is Bitcoin price going up from 70,000 to 200,000, right? That's basically 3x. So whatever you huddle at that point or up to the having, you're going to make potentially 3x on that huddle. Uh, so that's kind of why you do it. I mean, there's opportune times to huddle and less opportune times to huddle. Uh, bear markets are times where you might be actually selling out of them, you know, after the peak in the bull run. Uh, and CleanSpark did that really well the previous cycle, and we'll see if they can do that again this cycle. Uh, yeah. uh, why is Iris Energy break even to be profitable so high? I thought their efficiency was really good. Efficiency is part of it, right? But you also take a look into consideration the other costs that are behind the scenes for SGNA and things like that. So let's see, Iris Energy here right now is break even at let's see your break even without using uh, stock based compensation and the sgna they're at seventy two thousand right now and the main reason is their hash rate is is high right compared to others but it's still not high enough to pay for their um operating expenses so uh let's see here. we're looking at potentially 20.4 million in quarterly expenses that's like sgna all cash based expenses and may also have the stock based compensation in there as well. And then you're looking at energy expenses of being at 16 million for the quarter. So that's kind of why it, how it all kind of works out. And then also it depends on their uptime, their fleet, where their fleet is at this point. Right? If their fleet was much higher in hash rate right now, they would probably have a much lower uh, break even price on Bitcoin at this point. Right? So it's scale. So you really need scale on here to get to 16x to hash by having or higher than that uh, to really have that scale work for you uh, right now. Okay. Uh, Let's see. Do you think it's worthwhile to sell in pumps or do you feel confident just to huddle given your predicted future price performance? Um, yeah, I mean... There's going to be time where I'm going to start selling, right? That's probably going to be when becomes north of 100,000 or something like that, 100, 150,000, depending on how things progress. And at that point, I'll start dollar cost averaging out. I just, I will not be selling on pumps, right? Because, I mean, we may have a pump going 50%, then we may have a retracement of 20%, then we might go another 50% up higher than that. So there's, there's a time frame and price targets as far as where Bitcoin possibly will be before I start selling. Uh, and if I don't see those things happening, maybe I'll be selling faster too. Who knows? Uh, let's see. Do you have a price target for the end of the year for Mara? No, I don't. As far as the end, um, no. Because I just don't know where the price of Bitcoin is going to be at the end of the year. We're guessing maybe above 100000 maybe closer to 150000 Who knows? And then we also don't know how they're going to be operating. Uh, at that point, what's the network hash going to be as well? We're guessing maybe 800 exa hash to 900 exa hash. So there's a lot of variables there. But I think in the bull run, Marathon should be able to get above $80, I think, with, uh, without a problem, as long as it can fix their operations and things like that. Uh, let's see here. Sir, how long will it take Bitfarms to hit $10 a share? If they can build out 21 exa hash by the end of this year, I think we could probably see that either by the end of this year or early next year. Okay, uh, Bitfarm's ranking seems low on this metric today. Can you please explain why I still like it and keep buying? Uh, I'm buying it more on the side of growth, right? We've, I've been buying it in the past because they've been just operationally efficient, uh, doing all the right things. They did, they did some bad things in 2021. Uh, they bought Bitcoin at the wrong time. They sold at the wrong time. They had a huge huddle that they had. Uh, uh, what did they do with it? They put it into basically used it as security on a loan, right? Um, so they had to sell that with Bitcoin price going down in order to have that uh, loan be paid off and things like that, or at least not lose a huddle on it, anyways. So they did some stupid mistakes here in that cycle. I think they learned from it. They didn't get into Chapter 11 bankruptcy because of it. They did pay down over 140 million in debt in the last, uh, what's it been, about two years or something like that. So I think that's an achievement on their part. I think they've learned a lesson and now they're going to be continuing to go to 21 exahash. So they're also diversified, low cost energy. So there's just all these things going for them. And sometimes they do poorly. And we saw this also with CleanSpark where they weren't doing 
really well in some of these metrics. But when you look at the track record and things that they're doing, things obviously turn around for them. And I kind of see the same thing with potentially with BitFarms, Iron as well, on these types of things, right? Where they don't always do really well on uh, the combination of financials and things like that. But when you look at just the operation side of things, it's a different story at that point. Uh, Okay, next question. When Wolf's debt is taken care of, will they be in uh, running as one of the best miners as far as operations and profits are being made? Potentially, yes. Um, it depends on their, how well they grow, right? That's going to depend a lot because that will also dictate how much of the percentages, SG&A, things like that. So if they can grow really nice to 20x or something like that, that will definitely help them in the long run because that will lower all their other costs, or not lower, but... Percentage-wise, will make their other costs much lower, so that'll be a good thing there, all right? So we just need to continue to grow, be efficient, and things like that. Uh, let's see. What is your expectation of the global Bitcoin hash rate after the halving? <clears throat> I think we might see a little bit of a decrease, but it's not the decrease that we were kind of expecting. We were expecting like a 10% to 20% decrease with Bitcoin being at like 40, 50,000. But Bitcoin staying up at 70,000, a lot of these older miners and those le less efficient miners are still profitable. So we're not going to probably see a big dip in it. And um, so I'm guessing maybe 5%, if that, or if at all, um, depending on where Bitcoin goes by then. So it's, it's a different cycle this time around. I keep saying it, but it is. Do you think Q1 for BitFarms will turn profitable? Uh, it'll be close. If I look at BitFarms here really quick, on the number side of things, I'm looking that they will probably be at about 49.6 million here. On the quarter, roughly, that's my estimate for them. They were at 45 million at, or sorry, 46 million uh, for Q4. And they were only off by, how many cents were they off by? They were off by 17 cents. Uh, so it might be possible depending on how lean they're getting, obviously with SG&A, other things, expenses, they can do those things, then maybe it'll be close. I mean, because we only have about a 4 million increase in revenue for them uh, from that period here. Okay, uh, let's see here. Yep. Okay, next question. Uh, companies that hodl on balance sheet, do they dilute more? I watched the video of Dan Roberts, and he says that it doesn't make sense to dilute to hold BTC and reinvest in companies plus cash flow. Uh, right. There's, okay, yeah. how do I go about this? I think there's an opportune time to hodl, and I'm not saying to hodl all the time. I think there's a window, like usually between, you could say, 9 to 6 to t uh, 12 months before the having event. I think that's kind of when you want to start growing your hodl a little bit more. Uh, and the reason for that is because you are able to mine at such a much lower cost at that point, right? So you're coddling it at a very low cost. And then Bitcoin goes up 3x, 4x, 5x, whatever it might be after the halving event. And that's where you make a lot of gains on it, right? Um, so that's, I believe, accretive to investors, especially if they can use that hodl then, that value, right? And they're not going to time it perfectly to sell at the right top. But if they can get out somewhere near the top, close to the top, within 20, 30% within the top, I think that if they use that money then to grow into the bear market, I think that's a creative, a creative to investors. Uh, and that's kind of the way, at least I've seen it. Uh, I think that's probably the best. You've seen also Marathon CEO Fred Thiel previously about, was it about a year and a half ago? I think he stated in uh, one of their fire chats or something like that where they run the numbers and 100% hodl is not the best thing. 0% hodl is not the best thing. There's a mixture of where if you can do it at 50-50, more or less, right? Hodl 50%, sell 50% to fund uh, growth and operations and things like that. That might be the most opportune thing. But yeah, we're seeing obviously a lot more miners that are hodling right now, uh, ver selling very little Bitcoin into the having event. Uh, and that's, I think, mainly because they think that Bitcoin obviously is going to go up in value, like we all think of Bitcoin is going up in value. But I don't know if it's the right thing to do where you huddle everything, right? I mean, they're selling a little bit, but they're keeping a lot. 
Uh, I would have liked to have seen them maybe 50-50, right? That way you're not diluting shares and uh, your investors, things like that. Uh, but we'll see, right? Right now, it doesn't look that great because, like you said, uh, it's just obviously you're able to mine it much lower. And Bitcoin's going obviously up. But in the long run, if they can, time it more better towards the tops, sell the Bitcoin at that point, then it makes kind of sense. Uh, but yeah, obviously, it kind of hurts right now with the dilution. Let's see. Uh, I understand that you removed Sphere 3D any from your spreadsheet yesterday. However, can we expect it to be $5 a share? BTC hits 100,000 a coin. Uh, that's going to be a tough one there for them. Um, when I ran the numbers on the uh, break even numbers, they had a much, much higher cost to break even on Bitcoin price. But you never know. With Bitcoin going up in value, right, it usually lifts up all ships. So you never know. And then people could just be buying into all these. Uh, lesser stocks or I wouldn't say lesser smaller stocks uh, and that could obviously drive up the price as well so tough to say let's see with your new gains of cycle will you be investing in any other sectors I'm thinking US treasuries will be down as BTC peaks maybe a safe div dividend play to potentially double the new profits yeah I'm, I'll be looking into things I want to diversify a little bit maybe get into some real estate as well um, and then I'll probably put some back into maybe like the EV space, uh, I'm going to buy probably some more uh, Rivian shares. I still think that that is a longer term play. You're still probably looking at another 10 to 15 years on that one before we see potentially really good returns on it. Uh, so that's a longer play there. But I'll keep an eye on things, see where things go. Definitely not going to be sitting on cash though because cash just loses its value. Let's see. I'm um, trying to see if there's any more questions. Uh, let's see here. Okay. How are you feeling about the minor price action, Sebastian? I'm adding, but dang, this is rough. Yeah, it is rough. Uh, you know, it's the same feeling that I had back in 2022, right? Buying the miners and the prices were kept going down and down and down and down. I was down on some of these guys 60, 80% at one point, uh, you know, while I was dollar cost averaging into them. So it's not a great feeling, but I think the light at the end of the tunnel is getting closer. We're only eight days away from the having event now. And then after that, I think things should turn around uh, within the next couple of weeks after that. Uh, but it's still going to be a bumpy ride. Uh, what are your thoughts on Riot? I like Riot. Uh, I don't like their operations right now. And um, uh, what was the Rockdale? Is the Rockdale facility? I'm thinking. I'm drawing a blank here. But their new facility, of course, kind of supposed to be up and running this month, and they should have much better uptime there. That's kind of what I'm hoping for. We'll see if they, we can get that. That's also what Jason is saying from their CEO. So. We'll see how that works out for them, but I think if they can get their uptime to a much better position, they will do much better going forward as well. Let's see. Uh, okay, question. Thoughts on Hong Kong ETF and UK ETF releasing next week and next month? I think that's bullish for Bitcoin, obviously. More demand. Uh, adoption and demand is great. Uh, let's see here. Physical real estate versus REITs. I think I watched a video where REITs are more profitable and easier to manage versus renting. Yeah, I don't know if I want to get into renting. Um, if I do, I'd definitely start on a small, much, much, much small scale, like one tenant, uh, just to see how it goes. But I don't know if I want to do that because that's always a headache. Um, so I may just buy properties, fix them up, and sell them, or buy land, build a house, and sell it. Um, something. I'm going to do something with that side of things. We'll see. All right, I think we cut up to all the questions here for you guys. So, hope you guys have a wonderful afternoon or the afternoon. Wow, it's night. Wonderful night. Uh, and then we'll see what happens tomorrow. So, tomorrow's Thursday. We may do some other data on some of the miners, some metrics on things like that that we have to get through here this month. And that should be it, I think. Uh, let's see. All right, we got a couple more questions here, it looks like. Wow, you guys are still asking questions all right let's see if i can get through these relatively quickly here question what do you think about the future price target of iron you think that 40 per share with iron is realistic i think so um as long as it can obviously build up to 20x a hash by the end of this year 
Bitcoin going up much higher. I think it's possible. Uh, I don't in, I'm no longer getting into altcoins. So I'm not even going to comment on that because I don't even follow them anymore. I got burned too many times with altcoins. Let's see here. What's the optimal percentage of miner stocks in your overall portfolio? What's the overall percentage? Um, my overall percentage uh, is basically miners are like 50 some percent and uh, crypto, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a couple other ones are another 50% of that right now. And then Rivian's like a small percentage of it. So I'm pretty much all into miners and crypto, uh, or at least Bitcoin and Ethereum. The other altcoins, I'm just waiting for those to rebound and then I'm out of those. Uh, Tesla versus Rivian going forward, I think both will be fine. Tesla means obviously a technology company more or less with self-driving, the robots that they're doing, all that other stuff. They're a different breed. Um, Rivian, I think mm, uh, they're a younger company, so I think the growth is there more so than it is with Tesla. But obviously we'll have to see how the uh, autonomous taxi works with Tesla, how much the revenue they can make for that, all those things. Uh, Okay, what was your comment on BitFarms? BitFarms was that the uh, founders of BitFarms went to Paraguay to obviously um, shake hands of the legislators there and, you know, pound some, uh, well, pound the ground a little bit uh, in support of Bitcoin mining in the country and things like that, which they think they were kind of successful in it. They got a Senate letter um, sent out, I believe, that's in support of Bitcoin miners and things like that. So we'll see how that goes. All right, that is it, guys. Uh, we're going to call it a day. Uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. We'll see what happens Friday. And then um, Saturday, I, I'm doing a live stream. Not a live stream. I'll do a live stream Saturday. Wow, it's late. Live stream, and then I'm also with Twitter Spaces with the BTC Mining Stock Guy on, what is that, 2 o'clock, I think? I think it's 2 o'clock. I'll have to double check. I got so many things going on. I'm uh, just all over the place here, but... Thank you so much for coming in to watch this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And we'll do another Q&A on Saturday, like we normally do Wednesdays and Saturdays. So I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video, Fridays, and then Saturday as well. So thank you. Have a great night, everyone. I'm done. Tired.